Hello, everyone. My name is Hemant. I'm an engineer at Datadog working on the Kubernetes networking team. And today I'll be talking about implementing networking quality of service for containers with eBPF and Cilium. So why do we need networking quality of service? Kubernetes is designed for sharing nodes between different applications and teams, but we cannot really control what your neighbors are doing. So you can have noisy neighbor effect. And in Kubernetes, we do not really have abstractions that allow us to maintain a given quality of service level. So you might apply bandwidth limits on your workloads, but depending on the nature of your application, that might not be flexible enough. Or you may implement bandwidth requests to hint at the Kubernetes scheduler so that the workloads can be spread across multiple nodes, but that's not a perfect solution either. And if you look at hypervisor metrics from cloud providers like ENA bandwidth allowance exceeded in AWS, you'd be surprised to see that the hypervisors drop a lot of packets. And the worst part is the hypervisors decide which packets should be dropped. So can we do better? What if we can prioritize which packets should be dropped under network contention? So let's take a quick look at how uh, at a demo to understand how the system works, and then we'll come back to understand how, how it's built. So I have three pods. There's I have a NetPerf server and then two NetPerf clients. The first pod is called high priority client, which has a QS class set as guaranteed. And I have a low priority pod, uh, which has QS class set as best effort. So let's see if my pods are running. And the NetPerf server is running on one node and both the clients are running on, on a different node. So let's exec into the low priority client on the bottom right and high priority client on the top right. And what I'm gonna run here is something called super NetPerf, which basically runs multiple instances of NetPerf and aggregates them, uh, averages them together. And I'm gonna run the same thing here to create some network contention. And we'll come back in two minutes to see the results. So if you get back to the talk, So the kernel has had support for some kind of quality of service for a long time now. So you can either set the type of service bits on the IPv4 header on, or very recently called DSCP, but whether those bits are respected or not depends on the kind of packet scheduler you have configured. So for example, uh, uh, Prio and MQ Prio implement something called a strict priority, which can lead to starvation of processes which are uh, classified as low priority. But FQ from 6.7 and above implements something called as weighted round robin. And this is explicitly designed to avoid starvation. So it has three priority brands, high, medium, and low. And the weights are designed in such a way that if a high priority part competes with a low priority part, the high priority part gets 90% of the bandwidth. Similarly, if the high priority part competes with the medium priority part, the high priority part gets 75% bandwidth. And another, if you want to implement a system like this in Cilium, there's another feature that kind of controls uh, how the queue disk setup uh, is on the node. And, that, and that's Cilium Bandwidth Manager. And Cilium's Bandwidth Manager implements bandwidth management with FQ and early, earliest departure time compared to using something like token bucket filter. And this allows to avoid a global queue disk lock, which has proven to be a lot more CPU efficient. And if you're interested in learning more about it, I would highly recommend either reading Google's carousel paper or Daniel has a great KubeCon talk. I'll have references to that at the end. So once you enable Cilium Bandwidth Manager, uh, Cilium installs FQ queue disks on uh, every hardware queue on all the physical devices that are managed by Cilium. So thanks to eBPF, we can actually set the priority for every packet by updating the field on the SKB without having to change anything on your application. 
So how does this entire system look? Uh, the user sets a QS class on their pod and that annotation is translated into a BPF map. And we have a TC egress BPF program attached to every physical device managed by Cilium. And in that BPF program, we look up the uh, BPF map based on the endpoint ID to get its corresponding priority level. And we set the SKB priority value to make sure that the uh, packet scheduler can enforce those priority class. And this is the customary single slide BPF code changes. Uh, this is, we basically update the Cilium Stu NetDev BPF program to look up the BPF map and update the CTX priority value. And here are the references uh, that I was talking about earlier. And if you're interested in looking at the code or giving us any feedback, you can uh, go to pull request 34366 and I appreciate any feedback on it. So now let's go back to the demo just to, uh, to see if our uh, benchmarks are completed. So as you can see here, the low priority, oh, uh, one, I think I have the wrong priority set, but the you can see that the one is to nine ratio on uh, 138 and 914. 